Let's start by going up to File, and then let's go to Project, and let's go to New right here. So I'm just going to type in a project name here. And I'm going to choose a location. I'll just choose the exercise files right here. And I'll hit Choose. And then for the um, all of these subfolders, I'm going to use the defaults. And then I'll hit Accept. Now I'm just going to minimize Maya, and I'll bring up a Finder window. And let's go over here to Pictures. And I'm just going to grab my front view, my side view, and my top view. I'm going to select all three of these. I'm going to right click and go to copy three items. And then I'm going to go to exercise files. And then I'll go to the project folder for the helmet. And then I'll go to source images. And then I'll right click and paste those three items. All right, let's go back to Maya. And let's start creating some reference planes. So I'll just tap the space bar. Up here, I'm just going to click once on the uh, poly polygonal plane. And over here under polyplane 1, I'll change the subdivision's width and height to 1. And I'll change the width to 10 and the height to 10. And then press return. All right. So now I'm going to hit Command D to duplicate this, and I'll rotate it negative 90 degrees. And then I'll hit Command D again and rotate it on X. Let's see here. This will be 90 degrees. And then my translate Z value for this plane is going to be negative 5. I'll select this plane right here. This is a translate x value is going to be negative 5. And this plane right here, the translate y value is going to be negative 5. I'm going to hit 6 in all four panels. And I'm going to turn off the grid in my top panel and my side panel. All right, I'm going to go to Window, and then I'll go to Rendering Editors, and then Hypershade. I'm going to create three new Lamberts. One, two, three. So I'll start with Lambert 2. Double click on that. And I'm going to rename this to Front View Mat. Over here on the color attribute, I'm going to click on this little checkered button right here. I'm going to click over here on File. And then under Image Name, I'm going to select this button right here. And I'll choose the front view of the helmet and then hit open. All right, I'm going to double click on Lambert 3. And this is going to be side view mat. And over here on the color attribute, I'll select file and then choose the file. And we'll do side. And then under Lambert 4, I'll double click. Rename this to Top View Mat. Over here on the uh, color attribute, I'll just map this to a file, and then I'll choose Top. All right, so I'll take this top view right here, hold down the middle mouse button, drag over to the top panel, and drop it. I'll take the front view right here, hold down the middle mouse button, drag over to the panel, and drop. And I'll take the side view right here and drag it over to the side panel and drop it. All right. I'm going to close the hypershade. I'll select this plane right here, and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. So let's see here. Rotate Y should be 90. Select this plane right here. Rotate Z should be 0. All right. I'm going to select all three of these planes, and I'm going to click on this button, 
which is going to add these objects to a new layer. I'll double click where it says layer one and over here I'm going to rename this to ref layer. Hit save. Alright, now over here in this empty box I'm going to click until there there's an R that displays there. And now we can no longer move these reference images. Okay. All right, so we're going to start with a cylinder shape. So I'm just going to drop a cylinder at the origin of my scene here. And I'm going to hit R for my scale tool, and I'm going to scale this up. So I want the width of the, the object to match the width of the helmet here. And then over here, I'm going to scale on the z-axis to match the length of the helmet approximately. In the side panel I'm going to scale down to shorten this and then I'm going to move it down and maybe move it over a tiny bit. Alright, uh, I'm going to turn off the grid in the front view and in the perspective view. So I don't want the faces on the top and on the bottom of this object. So I'm going to right click, go to face, select all of the faces on the object. So I've got everything. Now I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to marquee around the faces here in the center and that's going to unselect all those faces. Now I'll press delete on the keyboard and I'll delete the faces on the top and the bottom. And now I have just the faces I need. All right, I'm going to right click and go to object mode and let's go to window rendering editors and then hypershade and I'll create a new Lambert, double click on it. This is going to be transparent matte and I'll bump up the transparency on this and I'll change my color here. Maybe take the transparency down a little bit. All right, I'm going to hold down the middle mouse button over this material and drag it onto the object in the viewport. And close the hypershade. All right, I'm going to turn on wireframe on shaded so that I can see the edges of my object. So I'm going to click on this button right here. Okay. All right, so I'm going to right click and go to vertex and I'm going to select the vertices at the top of the shape. And I'm going to move them down so they just match up with the the space where the eyes, the bottom of the eye holes in the helmet. All right, now I'm going to select some of the vertices towards the bottom of the shape here and start to move them down to match up with the reference image here. And these need to be moved up. Or maybe I'll take this and move it over slightly. Okay, so as you can see in the front panel and the side panel, the images don't quite match up. So in this panel, I should be moving these vertices down. But as you can see, the further I move them down, the further it gets away from this angle and the reference image here. So I'm just going to choose kind of an in-between point between the side view and the front view. So now over here, I'm going to select all of these vertices on the top of the object. I'm going to hit R and scale them in on the x-axis. All right. Now I'm going to right click and go to edge. I'm going to double click on this edge at the top of the object. And I'm going to go in and extrude this up. 
So I'm going to then hit W and just go straight up. And I'm going to go to the top of the eye, the area that's cut out for the eye. Let's just go to the top. So I've got an edge loop at the bottom and at the top. I'll hit extrude again and I hit W and go up. And this time I'm going to kind of go to where the horns start. All right, now let's check what's going on over here. So I'm going to right click, go to vertex, and I'm going to move this section of vertices in. And I'm going to come in and start to move some of these vertices at the top to kind of match up the top of the helmet here. So then over here, I'm going to actually move these down and in. I'll transition this a little bit here, maybe move this out. Take this down right here. All right. I'm going to right click and go to Edge and double click on this edge right here. And I'm going to hit Extrude. And I'll hit W and move this up. And I'm going to hit uh, R. And over here in the side panel, I'm just going to scale on the y-axis to straighten this out a little bit. And then I'll scale in on the z-axis. And I'll scale in on the x-axis. Bring this in. Maybe move this down a little bit. All right. So I'll hit extrude again. And I'll go up and hit R and I'll scale in as I need to in the front panel, in the side panel. Okay, so up here at the top we need to close this hole in the top of the helmet. So I'm going to go to Mesh and then Fill Hole. So if you don't have these um, edges selected up at the top, you can just hit Q and double click on one of the edges and it'll select the entire loop right there. So once again, I'll go to Mesh and then Fill Hole. And now I have to come in and connect some of these edges. So I'm going to grab the Split Polygon tool right here. And I'll go to my top panel, and I'll start to split. Once I'm done, I'll press G. That'll bring up my uh, the same tool that I just used. We'll just go from the middle here.